since I no longer want to start in this VR template level, I'm going to go into edit, project settings, maps and modes. And here in editor startup map, I'm going to choose my landscape level. And this way, next time I start the project, it will go directly into this level. I'm going to try opening the project. And it opens in landscape level. Hooray! One thing I forgot to mention in the previous video about sculpting the landscape is that you can actually dig into the terrain when you're sculpting just by holding down the shift key. And that is going to dig a trench instead of raising a hill. And that's pretty important. I should have mentioned that. I guess I just usually don't make rivers or anything like that. In the last video, I mentioned some weird grid lines that were appearing. That's happening here as well. I don't think it's an issue, just about rendering. Let's increase the teleport area so that we can move further across our glorious landscape and check out our hills and textures. I'm going to click on Nav Mesh Bounds Volume and we will scale it larger. See how it scales symmetrically from the center? If we want to move this pivot point, you can hold down Alt and click the middle mouse button to move it. And now if we scale, you can see it's moving on the opposite side. So actually I want it the other way. So Alt, middle, mouse button, and now it's going to scale from that left side, but only for one click, then it's moving back to the center again. And this is coming back to me very slowly. It's been a while. I've added a giant chipmunk to the level since this is supposed to be a megalophobia game. And if the player is going to climb this hill, we need to make sure that the nav mesh bounds volume is tall enough. Make sure the bottom of it is into the ground, but then the top of that cube you can scale to let the player climb as high as they are allowed to go. So if I want the player to be able to make it to the top of the hill, I need to scale the cube taller. The chipmunk is from a site called Meshy, and I did ask for a cute chipmunk, and I got one with fangs. That's okay, he's uh, just kind of terrifying. You're probably going to want to stick to 2K textures, um, otherwise 4K can be a little harder to process in VR. That's 2K, and this is 4K, and you can see, yeah, it looks better, um, but if you don't have a high-end machine, this might be difficult to render. It's safer to stick to 2K for now, at least in the year 2024, and you really aren't going to be staring at the ground that much anyway to notice, probably. I'm just going to change the directional light here. So we can see just how terrible our tiled landscape looks at the moment. Pretty bad. If you're using a Megascans material, you can click into that material and you'll be able to adjust the tiling in the X and the Y direction. It's a little counterintuitive the first time because the lower the number, the larger the tile is. And that's because it's not really tiling scale. It's how many tiles in a certain area, I think. 
So if there are fewer tiles, then each would have to be bigger to fill that space. And sometimes increasing the tile size is going to make the landscape look better. And sometimes not. If we increase the tiling to two, we get very tiny tiles. Make sure you move down to where the player would be standing for a better idea of what it'll look like in the game. Let's check point five again. You just have to make sure that the clover and the grass aren't too large. So definitely test. This is at 0 0.5. And yes, the scale looks good. This is the 2K texture. The clover is the correct proportion. But yeah, we still see tiling, definitely. We're gonna have to do something else. If you want to create your own material for the landscape, you can get an image using an AI image generator. I used Midjourney. And I actually asked ChatGPT what would be a good prompt. You could copy that one if you want to. What you want is a seamless texture. And in Midjourney, if you do dash dash tile, that will give you a tile where the edges match up. You definitely want that. Do not zoom out. I tried that in Midjourney and the colors weren't really quite right in the zoom out. Um, so I would just say if you get a good even looking texture, just upscale that to 2K 2048 by 2048. Uh, I was messing around with some different clover textures before. I'm actually going to delete the material and create one from scratch. Right click and select material. And the naming convention is to do M underscore, but uh, whatever, I didn't do that here. I'm gonna call it my clover. And then click into that. This is a material graph. Right click and drag to move around. Use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Right click and search for texture sample. And that will give you the texture sample node. And just make sure you're clicked on that. And over here in details, you can select the texture that you want and you can search. Mine happens to be right here. And now I can left click on RGB and drag the pin to base color. I'm also gonna put the roughness to one because I don't like shiny clover or grass. And that looks good. You can apply it to see what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And now we have my clover, a simple material, and I can click the landscape and drag my clover as the material. All right, there it is. And now here it looks particularly bad because this is the image I had zoomed out on that didn't really work out. I'll switch it for something else later in the video, but let's leave it for now so we can see the tiles very clearly when we manipulate the scaling and other things. If you want to change the size of the tile, you can right click and add landscape layer coordinate or coordinates. I'm going to attach that to the UVs in the texture sample. Make sure you're clicked on that landscape layers. And uh, now let's see for the scale. If I do two, everything's going to get larger. Let's see what happens. Yep. 
Let's try some different scaling here. Let's try one. Looks like that. And two looks like that. Usually the I think two would look better in the game. Of course, with those tiles. Here we go. I, I replaced those tiles with a non zoomed out version. These look better. But we still have a lot of improvement ahead of us. These actually look kind of like prickly clover. <laughs> I'll fix that later. This, by the way, is the actual picture I'm using now. The seamless texture. Okay, and what I'm doing, I'm in GIMP 2, the image editor, and I'm reducing the contrast. And I'm also going to apply a blur to it a little bit. And this is going to just help reduce the tiling effect. What else can I do? I could play around with dodge and burn tools. I think uh, you would what dodge the shadows and burn the highlights or something like that. It is kind of sad to have to make the beautiful picture a little more blah and monotonous, but it's going to help with the tiling effect. All right, you can see the difference there between those two. Mine, it looks kind of more grayed out or blurred out. And let's um, replace that original picture with my sort of blah version of it. All right, well, I think that looks a little bit better already. And I think here I just tinted it to make it pop a little more. Oh, to show if you export it to the same file again, you can right click and re-import, which is much easier than deleting and dragging it back in again. We can create a normal map as well, which I guess gives it a little bit of depth. Make sure um, you use your original picture, not the blah version of the picture. And then filter basic or generic, I mean, normal map. And I think all that is okay. So add another texture sample and click on it and choose your normal map. And now connect the RGB to the normal. Let's see what happens when we apply the normal map. Yep, did you see how it changed? And this is set just to one, I would assume. Okay, and now it's back again without the normal map. And there's the normal map again. Well, we'll see if that really even shows up in VR or not. Here is a Megascans landscape with no normal map, and here it is with the normal map. And you can see the tiling, of course, we haven't fixed that yet. But yeah, look, this looks more realistic, I would say. Um, I mean, it's a bit weird, but yeah, it looks like the grass has a texture. I've removed the landscape material. For now, you can just click clear to do that. 
and I'm going to make a new material. First I have my, well this is my original picture, I don't actually need that. I have a normal map, and then I made three different tints. One like green, one more blue, and one a little more yellow. Those are the ones I'm going to use. So right click and create a new material. I will name it properly, M underscore. I'll call it clover field, why not? Double click to go into the new material. And now I can add that texture sample node. And select clover one. The other way you can add these is in the content drawer. You can just drag much easier that way. So I'll drag in clover two and clover three. And then I am going to right click and add a landscape layer blend. Make sure it's selected and then click the plus three times because we're making three layers. And I'm going to call mine green, blue, and yellow. I really cannot stand <laughs> these material graphs. They get so messy. All right, then connect everything as so. Almost forgot to change the roughness to one. I do not want shiny clover. And then we can drag our new material and we have a black landscape. Perfect. The end. The game is good to go. No, actually we have to go into landscape mode. Oh, and never mind those question mark things there. Those are from some layers I made earlier. Just pretend that these were never here. Okay. All right. Now, those are our three layers that we just created, Clover 1, 2, and 3. Now see, it won't let me do anything quite yet because there's one more step and that's to click these pluses and select the top choice that you have. And I don't know, weight layered, some blending, whatever that is, I don't Let's go into landscape mode. Paint. And then let's just select these brush tools on the left here. Tool strength can be low to start. And brush size, just select what is appropriate for your terrain. Click on one of your layers, whichever one you want to paint with. And the first time it kind of makes the weird gray squares, but then it stops doing that afterward. Okay. And this obviously looks really bad, but just to show you <laughs> now we can click on smooth and uh, never mind. It'll just stay on the same brush you were. I was doing something else before. And then you can smooth. And if you keep smoothing, you can smooth the new color away completely. So don't do that. But uh, yeah, this is where your artistic skills are crucial. I'm not doing a great job here. You can see. Now let's try the yellow color. Uh, we've got to click on paint, of course. And there's that gray square the first time. All right, that looks yellow. Maybe tool strength can come down a little bit. 
and just play around because you will get a feel for these brushes like the the longer you hold it down the more yellow it's going to be you can drag quickly or slowly all right let's go back to our original green add some of that back in oh maybe that was too much i'm gonna bring down the tool strength i think that is kind of like opacity the tool strength and then there's the brush fall off as well you can play around with all right so i believe when you're smoothing the smoothing only applies to the layer that you're clicked on that gives you more control so don't worry about if you go over the other colors yeah see it doesn't affect the other layers and tool strength when you're smoothing is just the strength of the smoothing all right so this is uh I, yeah not not wonderful but it, it is a little bit breaking up the tiling effect you gotta admit that a little bit and from down here actually it doesn't look too bad sometimes it helps to come down to about the level that the player would be standing and you can smooth from there all right let's try something else now let's choose this this third brush option and you can search for noise to find a texture that looks something like this I believe a lot of these come with the sample content or something like that in the template and then if you paint it's going to use that texture and play around with the different settings you've got scale you've got brush size you've got tool strength as well so okay that was <laughs> that was a high tool strength You can also play around with your lighting, your directional light, in order to make the landscape look a little bit better. You can maybe enhance your colors or try to hide any flaws. You can change the color tone there rather than editing your textures. You could just use the lighting in your level. Go back into the material and now we're going to right click and add landscape layer chords or coordinates. And we need three of these so we can just control C, control V, control V. Because each of these is going to be a slightly different size which will hopefully break up the tiling effect all right so we have mapping scale that can stay this one will change to 1.5 let's say so 0 
and this one will be three which might give us some pretty large clover but that's okay we'll take a look You can see that the yellow clover is larger. It's got a larger tile size than the green and the blue. So we have three variations. And I don't know, does this help break up the tiling or does it just look like weird tiling now? Let's come down to the player height. And actually this looks pretty good play around some more and we can try one and then two and then three this way everything is large we got rid of the zero so in theory this should look better no, yeah, I think it does. And we could add normal maps as well to this. We will need three copies of the normal map. And we need another landscape layer blend attach all that and then we can keep our same coordinates going into the normal maps and then plug that into normal and let's take a look when we apply it yep you can see the normal map there a bit more 3d looking Well, let's look around from the inside. That looks nice. I mean, considering this is a very simple material, relatively, it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to disconnect the normal maps and apply the material and hop back into VR to take a look around and see because now this is going to be much easier on the processor of your PC and in my opinion it looks fine without the normal maps especially considering in a game there's going to be a lot going on and people are not really going to be staring at the grass. They probably won't really notice as they're solving puzzles or, you know, fighting monsters. Not in my game. No fighting monsters. But yeah, I mean, are you really noticing tiling? I'm not. By the way, I added a fourth layer to paint. I added a dirt texture. That's what I made this path with. I just painted a little bit of dirt right here. 